Welcome to Utah Agriculture in the Classroom's Hatching Science Movie, a full 21 days of discovery from egg to chick. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Today we're going to start with the chicken. This is a mother hen. Inside her body, an egg begins to form. At first, it's mostly yolk, and if the egg is a fertile one, an embryo or baby chicken will be attached to the yolk. As it passes through this tube, it is coated with albumin, also known as the white of the egg. Right before it's laid, it stops in a little compartment where it's coated with a hard covering. The shell actually comes last. This is a continuous process. As one egg is leaving the hen's body, the next is already well underway. The egg contains everything a developing chick, or embryo, needs to grow into a baby chick that can survive in the outside world. The shell is the hard covering that protects the chick, but it also has thousands of tiny holes, called pores, that let oxygen in so that the chick can get new air. The yolk supplies the chick with nutrients. The albumin, or egg white, provides a safe cushion for the chick in case the egg is bumped and also supplies protein when the chick begins to grow very rapidly. The germinal disc is where you can find the chick embryo. It starts out as one tiny cell, but given the right circumstances, it will grow into a full-sized chicken. The air cell is a pocket of air at the base of the egg that will be used by the chick when it is ready to take its first breath. Calaza may be a difficult word to say, but it serves an important role by anchoring the yolk in place. This keeps the embryo from getting beat up and bruised as the egg is turned, and also keeps it in place where temperature, moisture, and nutrient access are perfect. Lastly, two membranes can be found just inside the shell. These membranes are like the police of the egg. They make sure that good things like oxygen get in, and bad things like bacteria stay out. They also ensure that moisture stays inside the egg, but waste gases like carbon dioxide can get out. Just as important as what's inside the egg is the environment outside the egg. Eggs need a moist, warm environment in which to survive. They must also be turned to make sure that the chick develops correctly. Mother hens will sit on their eggs to keep them toasty and humid, and they know instinctually when to turn them. We humans don't have the time or ability to sit on eggs. Instead, we use incubators, there are many different types of these, to provide the warmth and humidity. And we must remember to turn the eggs at least three times a day to keep the baby chicks inside healthy and happy. Even as early as the first few hours, the embryo begins to form specialized cells that will become complex organ systems later on. Muscle cells, nerve cells, and digestive system cells are forming, but none of them will work yet. Blood vessels begin to form, but no blood can pass through the vessels yet. Even the eyes are starting to form. The embryo will be about three millimeters long by the end of the first day. Things happen quickly on day two. At 25 hours old, the chick's heart begins to form. At 33 hours, the ears begin to form. And at 42 hours, the heart starts to beat and send blood through the vessels that connect the yolk, the source of the chick's nutrients, to the embryo's developing organs. Can you see the heart beating in this video? At the same time, other specialized cells continue to divide and grow. Note that the chick develops each of its body systems at the same time. You might think that blood vessels develop first, then the blood that will pass through them forms, but this is untrue. Instead, both of these things form at the same time, and when both are ready, they start to work together. Different organ systems develop at the same time too. For example, even though all organs rely on the brain for instructions, the brain, eyes, digestive system, and all other organs form at the same time instead of waiting for one to finish before the other one starts. When they are all ready, they will work together. By day three, the head and tail can be seen as well as the buds that will become wings and legs. The specialized cells begin to form tissues, which will eventually form organs like the tongue, liver, kidneys, and lungs. 
to supply all of these cells with the nutrients they need to keep growing, more blood and blood vessels form. On day four, the toes begin to form. At this point, most of the chick's body parts are present, but most of its organs are still too simple to function. The chick is so tiny that its heart is only a fraction of an inch from its eye. It still has a lot of growing to do. The chick's tiny body has separated from the yolk. The embryo still relies upon the yolk for nutrients, but now it also rests upon the yolk as if it were a comfy pillow. In this time-lapse video of a chick's development from day two to day three, you can see the heart begin to beat regularly as the chick's small body lengthens and widens out. On day five, the chick is already starting to form the next link in the life cycle chain as its reproductive organs begin to form. This means that before a chick is even hatched from its egg, it is getting ready to make more chicks later on. On day five, the leg bones begin to form, but it will still be a few days before any of the chick's bones harden. On day six, the beak becomes visible and the chick is able to bend its wing at the elbow. Its intestine, which before was just a simple tube, is getting so long that it must loop around in order to fit inside the chick's body. You may be asking yourself, well, when will this silly chick get its feathers? Day seven is the day. Today, the first feather buds begin to appear along its tail and thigh. The eye is developing rapidly in this stage, and today the chick will be able to bend its knees for the first time. On day eight, more feather buds appear and an egg tooth forms. On day 21, this egg tooth will be the tool this chick uses to break out of its shell. In the next few days, the chick will start moving around a lot. It needs to exercise its new muscles as much as possible while it can. Pretty soon, the little chick will be too big to move inside the egg at all. On day nine, eyelids and kneecaps develop. The yolk still has plenty of nutrients left to help the chick until it hatches, but the yolk is now noticeably smaller than it was in the beginning. On day 10, the chick moves even more, and some of its more refined features develop. Claws, comb, and flight feathers. In the video, you can see that the chick is still exercising by the end of day 11. This exercise is good for its skeleton, too, and it will begin to use calcium from the shell to harden its bones and beak. On day 12, development continues and scales appear on the legs. On day 13, the right and left collarbones fuse together to form the wishbone. Here, you can see more movement inside the egg. By day 14, the chick is starting to feel crowded Today or tomorrow, it will turn its head toward the bottom of the egg and it will stay that direction until it hatches, simply because it's too big to turn around. The skull has begun to harden. The chick has used much of the yolk's energy and nutrients, and by now the yolk is noticeably smaller and even difficult to distinguish from the rest of the developing chick. On day 15, the scales, claws, and beak become firm as the chick continues to develop all of its other parts. By day 16, everything is in place. Now it's just a matter of time before the chick's body is developed and strong enough to survive outside the egg. Day 17 brings an exciting development. The chick turns its beak toward the air cell to get ready to take its first breath. Since the chick can't move inside the egg, it turns its head by developing a double bend in its neck. In other words, its neck makes a full loop first toward the skinny side of the egg, then rounding back toward the blunt side of the egg where the air cell is. By day 18, the chick is almost ready. This x-ray video of an 18-day chick shows how the skeleton is nearing full development. On day 19, the chick breaks through the membrane on the air cell and takes its first breath. The lungs inflate and begin to function. 
The last of the yolk sac enters the chick's body where any remaining yolk will be used to help the chick survive after it hatches. On day 20, the chick relies completely on its lungs for respiration and its body takes up all the space in the egg. It's finally day 21 and the chick's neck begins to spasm automatically. This is what will cause the chick to peck its way out. It's time for the egg excitement. You will probably be able to hear the chick tapping long before the chick's beak pops through. Once it does, the exhausted chick will take a breather, literally breathing the outside air to get used to the new environment and to prepare for the hard work ahead. This break will take three to eight hours. Once the chick has rested, it begins to turn slowly inside the egg, tapping the shell open as it goes and effectively cutting off the top of the egg. Once it's made it about three-fourths of the way around, this may take up to five hours, things start to go much faster. The chick begins to push and struggle against the top of the egg, trying to break out in a process that should take only about 40 minutes. Then suddenly, it's the moment you've been waiting for. The chick emerges, wet and panting for air. It will lie still for a while, but don't worry, it's just resting. After all, breaking out of an eggshell is hard work. Soon enough, it will begin to rise to its feet. It may seem unsure of itself at first while it figures out its muscle coordination, but within hours, it will be all the way dried out and peeping and hopping around under the brooder lights. Unlike human babies, chicks emerge with bodies that are able to walk within hours. Chicks rely on their instincts to know when they need to eat, drink, and find warmth. All we humans need to do is provide them with food, water, and heat, as well as some room to exercise, and the chicks will babysit themselves. This has been a presentation by Utah Agriculture in the Classroom. For more resources and lesson plans on hatching chicks, please visit us online at utah.agclassroom.org.